we think we are, we are more comfortable and we are, I think, conditioned to give through uh, via um, online giving. And I know, I think for next Sunday, especially next Sunday, it's a Thanksgiving Sunday. And I, and I know people can still give to the, uh, with a, a search, church center app, but I'm going to ask, really pray, that, prayerfully consider preparing, you know, thinking about uh, giving Thanksgiving offering. And I want, I want, and I'm going to have next Sunday, I want to invite you to come actually to the front and give as an act of giving. So I think we have somehow, we have become in so many ways comfortable. We have so much, this day we have forgotten that even a symbolic act really is very meaningful, it's helpful for us, help us to remember. You know, and, and I remember, still remember my wife telling me about when she was young, every Saturday night, her family gather around the table, uh, getting their offerings ready for next, next, very next day, and even ironing, ironing the bills to make it you know, straight and everything, so that give a practice. From young, they practice giving unto God. There's something about preparing our hearts and minds, and really that even an act. I'm not saying your giving online is bad. I'm not. I'm just saying that act is also very, very helpful to us and really strengthen our hearts and minds. So I want to encourage you to do that. Please take one of these envelopes. You'll have some uh, available next week as well, but let's do that. Um, something else I wanted to say. Uh, again, I've just totally forgot. When it comes to me, I'll, I'll tell you this, I'll tell you that, okay. Uh, we have been going through Gospel of Luke now almost over a year, and I think this is about 25th messages. And we are still in chapter 9, but, um, and we are really looking through the Gospel of Luke, especially this year, next few more years, I don't know how long, you know, until Jesus comes back, we'll look at the Gospel of Luke, to see Jesus and encounter Jesus, and really, really see our Lord, our God, and, and, and not only worship Him, like, yes, uh, love Him, but also our lives may be transformed into His image that he has called creators to be. Okay? Today's passage is from Luke chapter 9, verse 18 through 26. The title of the message is The Question. The question, the most important question that we can ever ask. Bible ever ask, ever mentions, it, ever uh, ask us, we want to consider today. Luke chapter 9, verse 18 through 27. And if you can, if you can all stand. You know, we will, you can, read, you can follow along in your own Bible or you can follow along with the, the scripture which is on the screen as well. A reading from ESP, Luke chapter 9, verse 18 through 27. Now it happened that as he was praying alone, the disciples were with him. And he asked them, who do the crowd say that I am? And they answered, John the Baptist, but others say, Elijah and others, that one of the prophets of old has risen. Then Jesus said to them, But who do you say that I am? And Peter answered, The Christ of God. And, strictly, and he strictly charged them and commanded them to tell this to no one, saying, The Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected by the elders and chief priests and scribes, and be killed, and on the third day be raised. And he said to all, If anyone would come up to me, let him deny himself, and take up his cross daily, and follow me. For whoever would save his life will lose it, and, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. For what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? For whoever is ashamed of me and of my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. But I tell you truly, there are some standing here who will not taste death until they see the kingdom of, of God. Here ends the reading of the word. All God's people say, blessed be our God. Amen. Blessed be the Lord. Okay. I change every every week. God is good. Uh, 
Did I pray? No, I didn't pray yet, right? Okay. Let me pray. Father, we just come right now and ask, Father, I ask uh, more than a nice teaching, more than a nice message. Father, we ask your revelation of your heart. You'll come and meet with us, Father, that we will worship you in spirit and truth. As you look unto you, God, our hearts and lives will be transformed by your grace. Meet us here, God. We love you. We honor you. Come, Lord Jesus. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. It has been about three years since Jesus started his public ministry. Three years. Almost three years. And, you know, and he began by uh, being baptized by John and, and going to wilderness for 40 days you know, and, and prayer. And when he came back, he began to preach the gospel. One of the first things he did was to call people to follow. He called Peter and others to follow, including Matthew, the tax collector, to follow him. And as you said, as you saw last week, in about three years, he taught the kingdom of God, and the kingdom of God is hand in hand, and he preached the, uh, preached the gospel, he uh, healed the sick, cast out demons, began to demonstrate the kingdom of God having come on earth. And, 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 and we saw um, last week that in Gospel of Luke uh, uh, chapter 9, and after about three years, he had trained his disciples, and, you know, and now he sent them out on their first missions. The time has come. It's like a midterm exam. Did, uh, the, those in school, did you guys have a midterm exam already for the semester? No? No, not yet? You know, and I know final exams are tough, but, but you know, mid midterm exams are important. This, you know, today, what we see is almost a midterm exam for the disciples. This is about three years into ministry, and Jesus wanted to see whether disciples learned and understood what he was, what he was doing. This is a test moment. Those of you who are doing living life Bible study, you know, the test is coming up. If you have a final exam, you have to pass. Otherwise, you know, the exam, otherwise you have to take it again. Anyhow, okay. So, now, is, when you look at, I, I want to go look, I, I know this, this is a passage that some of us know well. I want us to sort of look at it slowly, and I want to see what Christ is saying here. It begins in, in verse, um, verse 18. I bet you said there's something that often we do not see often. It says, as it happened that as he was praying alone, Jesus was praying alone. More than any other gospel in Gospel of Luke, uh, it talks about Jesus praying more than anywhere else. Often play, things that never uh, mentioned in other gospels, Luke will mention. Jesus prayed while he, while, while, no, while he was being baptized, he prayed, and the Holy Spirit came upon him. Before he, before he began his ministry, he fasted and prayed 40 days in the wilderness. Before he uh, called his disciples, he prayed all night. And be, then he chose 12. And before he, and you'll you also see, before he begins his journey toward Jerusalem, he goes to the Mount of Transfiguration to pray. And often Jesus to pray here, it is a very important season came. Jesus went up to the area called Caesarea Philippi, about 20 miles north of Galilee. And now Jesus goes to a quieter place with disciples and others to have a quiet moment. And he's praying. For many different reasons. One of the reasons may be because a time has come. Different se they are entering different season. And he prayed. Jesus prayed. He prayed all night. Sometimes he would pray fasting. Sometimes he would pray early in the mornings before he start beginning the day. He'll go out and pray. I'm trying to put a little plug in. Come and join me in prayer, morning prayers if you can. Six o'clock. Only six o'clock. Not that, not that early. It's only six. Come and join me in prayer. Anyhow, let me go on. Um, so here, uh, now, now it happened as he was praying alone, disciples are with him, Jesus began to ask a question. This, this midterm exam has only two questions. Two questions. Only two questions midterm. If you fail one, you flunked, right? The first question is that this is so easy. He says, what do people say that I am? What do the, what do, what do the people say that I am? So all the older disciples were excited. Oh, yeah, some people say, you are John the Baptist. Some people say, you are Elijah. 
You know, the Elijah who went up to heaven without dying, you know, on the, the whirlwind, you know, chariots of fire. And, and, and some, some say you are one of the old prophets, like Jeremiah, who came back to life. This is what people say. Good. Okay, that's good. They're all good answers. Jesus, after three years of his preaching the gospel, and proclaiming the kingdom of God and healing, and all the things he has done, what did people saw about him? What do they say? Now, this was actually this was something that already brewing. If you remember when Jesus was on the boat, when they when and Jesus sleeping on the boat, when the wind and the storm came, how Jesus got up and uh, rebuked the wind and calmed the the ocean. People say, "Who is this?" He even commands the wind and the and and and, and even obey winds and the waves obey. They ask those kind of questions. Even, even what because King Herod asked, hearing about all those things going on, not only Jesus, but his disciples, healing all things going on, and he was wondering, who is this guy? And they, they were asking this question. So people were wondering, and people had different kind of opinions. Let me stop by, even in our generation, people have different kind of opinions who Jesus is. What do people say about him? What do, what do people say Jesus is? What do people say? You know, I don't know if you have ever talked to anyone. What do people say Jesus is? Some people, you know, if you're Muslim, there are over one billion Muslims in the world. They will say Jesus is prophet. They believe Jesus was born virgin from a virgin Mary. They believe Jesus did miracles. They believe Jesus taught. And they believe he's prophet. They even believe Jesus will come back. They believe Jesus went to heaven. One thing they don't believe is that Jesus is God. He didn't die on the cross. God will, let, God will not let prophet die, on the, you know, die unjustly. You know what the Jews will say? Jewish, Jewish people will say he was born, you know, he was a Jewish person. He was a, deemed a prophet. He healed miracles. They believe he did miracles and things. And his, he had followers. He, he, his disciples believed that he was a Messiah. They don't. They believe that Jesus, the disciple, their disciples, followers said he died and resurrected. I don't really believe that. But you know, different people say different things. What about our society? What do people say Jesus is? They had a survey about 1,400 people about the year 2020 in March. About 600 were Christians. Out of that, they asked about six, two-thirds said Jesus is a good teacher, but not God. Even among quote-unquote so-called Christians, Jesus is a great teacher, moral teacher, but he's not God. Many, about, about a third of Christians you know, in the survey said they agree Jesus is not God. And about two-thirds would say, was in the survey said, Jesus was the greatest person, but great and, and great and great person, the greatest person created by God. That is not right. But that's what two thirds of the even Christians believe. There's a lot of wrong ideas of who Jesus is. Who do you say Jesus is? And the people, these people say all kinds of things. That, that's what they say. But now there's more important personal question. More important question. Jesus says, Now how about you? What do you say? Who do you say that I am? You've been with me for the last three years. You saw me preach and teach and all those things. You live with me. You are with me. Who do you say that I am? You've seen me. You live with me. Proximity should give you a better understanding of the person. Me living with my wife for the last 38 years. 38, right, George? 38 years, right? 37? Okay. Close enough, okay, 37 and a half, so 38, okay, 38 years. I should know better than anybody else. You know, so that you've been with Christ for three years, and you heard all his teaching, all the miracles he has done, you saw all, all the things he did. Who do you say that I am? You know, Jesus, you know, why do you think Jesus, Jesus asked? Because he didn't know who he was? Why do you think he asked? Sometimes, you know, people, you know, people, you know, people think, a lot, so a lot of people in this generation, they, know, they don't know who they are. So they think I am who people say I am. They are so 
in tune to what people say about them and what they say about them make you happy or unhappy. That's not what Jesus was asking. Don't you think? He was not asking because I need to, you to tell me who I am. He wants to know, she is asking, do you know who I am? Who do you say that I am? Wanted to, to think about. Also, Jesus wanted to know all that he has taught and not done, whether he, you know, they really got, got it. You know, and by the way, those who are doing LL, you know, Living Life Bible Study, you know, people are somewhere, they're worried about the final exam. I'm, I told them, I'm going to give them real exam without any answers the week before you can study. We're not going to change anything. You just you take, it, take it with you. I don't know if I'm going to let them have a cheat sheet or not. We'll see. But anyhow, I don't know why I mentioned that. Okay. Just, but anyhow, where was I? The, the disciples, you just wanted to know whether they learned. The, the reason that teachers take, have to the exam is not to fail you. It's so that I want to know whether you learn what you're supposed to learn. Jesus was not sort of having a sort of like a midterm sort of evaluation. Have I done my job, what I came to do? He had decreed, uh, proclaiming the kingdom of God and all that. Now, the answer, he asked them, who do you say that I am? Guess who answers? Big mouth, Peter. I, I bet you there was a little silent. I bet you nobody answered. They didn't, know what to, they didn't know what to say. And they're all quiet. And Peter, and I could sort of say, see Peter, yeah. Yes, Peter, I think, I think. I don't, I don't know whether he was, I think. I, I think it's more like, I think. You are the Christ of God. Was it, do you think he said, you are the Christ of God? Or do you think, you are the Christ of God? You know, you think about it. How did he answer? You are the Christ of God. And that was powerful answer. This more than what everybody else said. Everybody else said, you know, Jesus is a some kind of prophet, meaning from God, to speaking for God. He has power to do some spiritual, supernatural things they can do. But he is not. They didn't, they didn't see him anything beyond that. Now, here, the Peter said, you are the Christ of God. You are Messiah, the, God's prophesied king who's coming to make all things right. God's savior was coming. You are the Christ of God from God. And he had greater revelation. It doesn't say in Gospel of Luke, but in Matthew's account, it gives a little better, more detailed account. It says, Jesus says, blessed are you, Simon Barjona, a son of John, because you didn't get this by yourself. God the Father revealed it to you. You got it because God the Father gave you a revelation. He had a revelation, something that you cannot get it on your own. God has given you understanding that that, that, uh, that your, your confession that I am the Christ of God. In actually, uh, in um, complete Jewish Bible, just, just one, you know, one of our congregation worships here on Saturday is Emmanuel uh, Messianic Jewish Congregation. I don't, know, I, don't, I, I don't know if you know that the rabbi is very famous. He is the main editor of the complete Jewish Bible. So I remember you know, I bought the Bible. Can you sign this for me? That sounds really weird. I don't know if I want to sign the Bible. I'm an editor. I'm just giving some notes here. I'm, I'm not the writer of the Bible. Anyway, so in complete Jewish Bible, this is what they say. But you, he said to them, who do you say I am? Kepha, which is actually, this is what, you know, uh, Kepha, which is Cephas, which is Peter. Kepha, Kepha answered, Messiah, Messiah of God. It's Messiah of God. Messiah or the Christ is the same thing. One is in Greek, one is in Hebrew. Supposed means anointed one. And, and so anointed one is one that the Spirit speaks of. The God, you know, the kings were anointed and priests were anointed and, and the, uh, the prophets anointed. The, uh, here when he said, Messiah of God, you are the promised, the king, the promised prophet, promised one that God sent, the speaking, the doing God's will for in, in the name of God and restore all things, he, you are the prophesied one. You are the Messiah. You are the Savior. And, and Jesus said, in the, uh, mentions the other gospel that you are, you know, God has given you all that. 
and then you got this revelation from God. There's something that Gospel of Luke does not mention. This is important moment. You have to understand why Jesus gave this midterm exam. Because in Matthew's a Gospel says something very interesting. He began to teach. He began to teach. In Matthew 16, it says, From that time, Jesus began to show, teach his disciples that he must go to Jerusalem, suffer many things, and from the elders, chief priests, and scribes, and be killed and raised up on the third day. So from this point and on, Jesus began to teach something he had never taught before. He's beginning to teach that Messiah, the son, son of man, has to suffer. He's going to go to Jerusalem and die. Before that, he didn't teach these things. Until now, he was just declaring that he is the son of God and he is Messiah. Now he's giving a deeper revelation of who he really is, came to do. This is an important moment. See, for three years, he, for three years now, at, 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 later, three to, uh, six to nine months, he is going to teach about who he really is. More, more deeper revelation of who he was. He began to teach. You'll find from now on, Jesus actually telling them many times how he, he predicted he will die, he will, be, he will suffer, he will be rejected, he will be killed. Son of man must suffer. And, and so let me just, I need to do, I, I wish we could, I have a blackboard and throw some things and talk to you a little bit. Son of, when he chooses Son of Man, this Son of Man is a main title Jesus calls himself by Son of Man. It has a many uh, different layers of meaning here. Son of Man meaning he's Son of Man, human being. But Son of Man also has a uh, you know, the, uh, prophetic understanding in the Old Testament. Son of Man is a title for the Messiah that is coming. And also here, and I saw most people, most uh, Jewish people who are ex waiting for the Messiah to come, they were looking for Messiah will come, like they talked about in Daniel chapter 7. It says in Daniel chapter 7, I don't have the PowerPoint, I, I, have, I have it, you don't have it. In my vision at night I looked, and there before me was one like son of man, coming with the clouds of heaven. He approached the ancient of days, meaning God, and was led into his presence. He was given authority, glory, and sovereign power. All peoples, nations, and men of every language worshipped him. He's not just a human being. He's worshipped him. Okay? His dominion is everlasting dominion, and that will not pass away. His kingdom is one that will never be destroyed. The, this son of man, most people waiting for this Messiah will come as son of God, God with authority and power that all will worship and he'll restore all things. This was the Son of Man people are waiting for. But Jesus now gives, clarify and gives new on this revelation of the Son of Man, the Messiah. He said the Son of Man must suffer. This was in the Bible as well. God has given these words prophetically through the prophets in Isaiah 53, and it says in this way in verse 3, 4, and 5, Surely he took our infirmities and carried our sorrows, uh, yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by, by him, and afflicted. And he was pierced for our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The punishment of, that brought us peace was upon him. By his wound we are healed. So this was in the Bible as well. Not just begin to explain, not the Messiah waiting for is the, the conquering king, Messiah, but he is also the suffering servant, one who will die and suffer for the sake to save his people. This is a suffering servant. Begin to reveal this thing to all. Begin to teach and will not. The son of man be rejected, killed, and on the third day be raised. He begin to predict and tell disciples what's going to happen. Now, you, 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 when, when, after Jesus was resurrected, when he is, uh, you know, after the day, after the resurrection, Jesus meets with two people on the way to, on the road to Emmaus. He tells uh, those two on the road, this is what Jesus says in Luke 24. These are the words which I spoke to you earlier while I was still with you, that all things which was, are written about me in the law of Moses and the prophets and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, 
Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer to rise again from the dead the third day. Jesus, I, I told you this already before. Now, I know, we, I know we often heard this, and I know we not understand this thing, but you have to understand, those days, and the people are expecting a Messiah, conquering Messiah will come and restore Israel and make all things right. But they didn't understand the other aspect of the Messiah is coming. He'll die on the cross to save us from all our sins and restore us, save us. But you know, even though we say we understand this thing, now, nowadays, yet often our hearts do not really practice that. We like God when we want God, we God, we love God when it comes to restore, you know, does miracles and, and gives us blessings and whatnot. We, we often get startled when we have difficulties and even suffer for the sake of Christ. We struggle because we still fully do not understand the Messiah, the, the, the God who came to save us. This is something interesting that I, okay, um, and the, the, Jesus says something here, startling thing. This is another thing that startled Jesus, the disciples. They were shocked when Jesus said, you know, the Messiah must suffer. They, they shocked them. And then Jesus says, told them, do not tell anyone about this. Okay, you are telling us this, this shocking thing, and you don't want us to tell anyone about it? What do you mean? And this is, they were shocked. They, they said, you know, I said, why not? Shouldn't you tell everybody that this is who you are? You know, people had... More, those is all the people had wrong ideas about Messiah, and they needed further understanding and teaching. And as before, Jesus identified himself publicly that who he was. He would rep, you know, and, and, and what happened if he, this word will get out now, and that he is a Messiah, and you know, people, people with the wrong ideas begin to attract, to come with revolutionary ideas, those who are, have, you know, what they call political ideas, all gather and without understanding that he is Messiah who's supposed to suffer. And so it will hinder the work he was supposed to do. He will hinder people under, really understand who he really was. So Jesus is saying, won't tell anybody yet. But next, nine, six or nine months, he will be showing the what he came fully to do. Look at next verse, 20, verse 23. And he said to all, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross daily and follow me. I bet you, you missed something that I, most people missed. I missed it before. He said, he said to all. Listen, this is important. He didn't just, he wasn't just saying to certain people. He was certain saying only to the super duper people. He wasn't saying only to the disciples only. He was saying not only to the, the leaders. He wasn't just saying to the apostles or special people. He was saying to all people, all people, that's you and me, that if anybody would come after me, Jesus said, if anyone would come after me, he must deny himself. She must deny himself. Carry his cross daily, carry her cross daily, and follow after me. Somehow, I don't know where we got this. Somehow we think that following Christ this way is for some special Christian, some mature Christians. And, you know, and that most of us and most people say, oh, no, no, I don't, I don't, I don't need that. I just, just want God to bless me. I just want God so that God can save me and give me what I need and, that and make my life a little bit better than before and bless me or not. Jesus, indeed, indeed, Jesus, indeed, Jesus said, if anyone wants to come and follow me, in anyone, everyone wants to come and follow me, he must deny himself. Because Christ is suffering Savior. He is a suffering servant because he's a suffering Messiah. Those who follow me, you are to suffer. You will suffer as well. If you are following a Savior who suffered for the sake of us, we are also called. Because we are also called to suffer as well. This is the truth right here. And this is why when, we, when you confess Jesus as our Lord and Savior and Christ, we are embracing all that he is. Not only the victorious king that he is, but also the suffering servant who came to restore all things. 
She said three things about. There's a, there's a quote that I found. I like this quote by uh, Kent Hughes. When we confess Christ, we embrace his dying on the cross for us. But we also accept the reality of a cross for ourselves. When we, when we confess Christ, we embrace his dying on the cross for us as well. And we also accept the reality of the cross for ourselves as well. Is that, is, is, do you hear what I'm saying? This is important. It's so different from the prosperity gospel out there. If you believe in God, he'll, he'll give you everything you want. If you two or three agree, the God will give you. You know, and I want a Lamborghini. Holy, let's pray together. Let's agree together. God will give me Lamborghini. We, somehow we get into these things. No. The Messiah who came to save us, he went on the road to Jerusalem to suffer and die. That's how we brought salvation for us. This is how he restored us. In his calling to follow him is the calling to follow him to the cross as well. So all the blessings God talks about and speaks about is are for those who will follow him. Those who will follow him. The three aspects he says, if anyone will come after me, let him deny himself. Following Christ is not about you, about me. It's not about me being happy. It's not me being, you know, blessed. It is an act of holy, selfless way. Christianity is not an add-on to my already full, my self-centered life. It is not an add-on. If following Jesus means deliberately choosing to follow another one, which is Jesus Christ, his follow his ways. Deny yourself. And say, so if anyone would come up to me, secondly, take up his cross daily. Have you heard this? Sometimes you use the word cross wrongly. You know, my bad boss is a cross I bear. You know, my, my cranky neighbor is a cross I have to bear. That's not the cross. And the people in the time of Jesus knew when they Jesus said cross, that meant you are condemned to die. That literally is the worst kind of death you can have. You are, you are supposed to carry with the cross. It's not some burdens I carry. It is what, what I have to, I, I'm willing to take on because I'm following God. Cross is not simply a trial or hardship. Not a, more than a burden. It means it meant someone condemned to die. This is a call to commitment unto death. There seems, there must, needs to be willingness to suffer martyrdom if it needs to be. When I made my promise 38 years ago to that most beautiful moment in the world, I said, I do. And I just said, you know, in sickness and in health, right? Where the poor richer, until death was apart. Even my marriage, covenant with my wife, I made the covenant for life. When you say we are following Christ, you say, you know what? You have to take up your cross daily. I'm willing to go all the way. I'm willing to, I'm, this is following Christ. I'm carrying my cross. If, he, if my Savior carried the cross, I'm willing, to, I'm willing to carry the cross. Third thing about suffering for Christ. Anyway, I put a um, few verses that I don't, I, don't, I don't think I put it in there. You know, Apostle Paul said, I have been crucified with Christ. Galatians 2.20. You, you memorize the verses, right? It is no longer I who live, I who live, but Christ lives in me. The life which I not live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. He said, I am been crucified with Christ. Apostle Paul would say, 1 Corinthians chapter 15, I die daily. I die daily. Why? Because I belong to Christ. I die daily to myself. If anybody would follow after me, come after me, follow me. He said, follow me. Where is he going? He's going to Jerusalem to die. He is in a cup. Follow me my ways. This is a common and characteristic word used the way of, of a disciple is to follow Jesus. Walking alongside with him. Go with him. Wherever he leads. In one of the old songs we love, we love to sing, right? Yeah, I, I know I love to sing. I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. 
I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. The world behind me, the cross before me. Remember that? So no one join me, I still I will follow. Right? I have decided to follow Christ. See, Christ calling for us. I, the Messiah, is one who suffers. Suffered. So he calls us to follow him. Carry our cross. Follow his ways. Because this is the best way. He goes on to say in the next verse, he says, in this way, let me, let me read another quote by Kent Hughes. I like him. One of the commentaries I read. If you confess him as Christ, you must, you must cling to his bloody cross as your only hope. And you must take up your own cross as you deny yourself and follow him. I want you to know, way to resurrection doesn't happen unless you, go, you die. Resurrection happen only happens after death. Death leads to resurrection. Now he calls us to follow him. The life he calls us to live leads to resurrection. That is path of death. Death to myself, living for Christ. Amen? Verse 24, whoever will save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life for my sake will save it. You're going to live in a different way. If you're going to try to save your life, you're trying to make your life more comfortable. This is what you're living for. This is not the way you will save your life. It says whoever will save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life, not just for sake of it, but for my sake, for Christ's sake, You'll, you'll find it. And then something amazing he says. For what, what, what does it a profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses or forfeits himself? You know what he say? he's saying here is that you are more worth, you are more worth more than the whole world. So you, you are more worth than the whole world. In the end, what's the point of gaining the whole world and lose yourself? No, you, that you, you are more than that. You are a whole lot more than that. You, God has created you in his, his own image. You're worth as much as God has called you to be. You are worth as much as the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, gaining things in the world, no matter how big it looks, compared to who you are supposed to be, it's not even comparable. You, you, you are called to live a life you may and fully gain the whole what God has for you. And, and, he, and he goes on to say, for whoever is ashamed of me, ashamed of me, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in glory. And of the glory of the Father, and when he returns, he comes with the glory of the Father, glory of the holy angels. Are you ashamed of Jesus? Are you ashamed of Jesus? Whoever is ashamed of me. I love my wife. Best example. I, and one of the best things I've ever done in my whole life. You know, I think probably maybe second best thing I've done in my life was marrying my wife. Saying yes, yes, when I say yes to her. Okay, you know, and uh, of course the best thing was ever was Jesus. But uh, my wife comes very close to it. You know, and so I will never be ashamed of her. Why would I? You know, and, and you know, and, and so you go anywhere, you know, I'm proud to say, hey, she's my wife. I've done good. You know, and, you know, and I'm proud of my, who, who my wife is, and, and, you know, and, and I'll not, never be ashamed of who she is, what she's done, you know, who she is, all that she is. And how much more so if you're ashamed of me, Jesus said. And then when he comes returns, I'll be ashamed of you. Following Christ. It's Jesus, it's, this is a watershed moment in the ministry of Jesus. It begins to show who, we, who he is and begin to clarify what he came to do. He is our Savior and our Lord, our King. So let me ask you the questions that Jesus asked. Who do people say that Jesus is? Who do people say Jesus is? What about you? Who do you say that Jesus is? 
Who do you say Jesus is? Is he a good teacher? You can dismiss. Is he a moral teacher? You can dismiss. If he, is he the son of God, God who came? You cannot dismiss. Sometimes people say Jesus is. Some people, sometimes people say Jesus is a nice, good man, good teacher, but he's not God. And they have that. Usually, that means they have never thought through what that means. What what they're saying. Jesus claimed to be son of God. He came to save the world. If he, all the things you have said and done, if you say he's just a good teacher, you don't know what you're talking about. You have not thought through it. Because he didn't claim to be a nice teacher. He didn't claim to be a nice prophet. He came, to, he came and said, he proclaimed to be a savior the, the, of the world. He, came, he, pro, he claimed to be the God, son of God. That's what he claimed to be. You cannot just take his teachings, nice teachings, and really miss what he said who he was. He is the Son of God. He is a Messiah. He is a Savior. Who do you say Jesus is? He is my Lord, my Savior. He is the Son of God. More than a teacher. He is the greatest teacher ever. So much more than a teacher. He's more than the greatest prophet. He is the Son of God, Messiah, my Lord, and my King. I'll follow him. Would you follow him? Who, who do you say Jesus is? Let me even be a little more personal. But does your life show that he, who he is to you? If you say he is your Lord and Savior, he is Master, does your life show? Does your life show? I like to show that he is your Lord and King. That means he's going to follow his ways. That means you live by his ways. That means you love him more than anything else. If you love your children more than the Lord God, who, who, who is your Lord, is he your Lord? If you love your job more than the Lord, is he your Lord? If you love whatever thing you put in more than Lord, is he your Lord? And, you, and say, when you say, he is my Lord, my God, my King, are you doing what he says? If you do not love the things he loves, is he really your Lord? And he loves, he came to seek and save the lost. If you are not about what he loved, to, what, he, what, he, what he came to do, then can you say that you really, he is your Lord in your life? That's what he's really saying. Who do you say he is? Who do you say he is? I'm sorry, I always have a way of making things heavy. He's not heavy. He is a wonderful Lord, my Savior. He is the best thing ever. He is my Lord, my King. The fragrance of our Lord God is beautiful. He is a good King. Our, our Lord, our God. Have a praise him come. You just sing the song, I have decided. You know how to play, do you know how to play this? Yes or stand. Let me speak to you. Let me ask you again. Personally, let me ask you. Who do you say that Jesus is? Who do you say that Jesus is? Father, we come. We love you. We honor you, God. You are the Christ, Messiah of God. You are the Son of God. You are the Lord God who came to save us, restore us. Our Savior, our Lord, we love you, God. All that you have done, all that you have taught, all that you are, declares and confirms that you are who you said you are. We love you, God. We honor you, God. Today we say you are our God, our Lord, our Savior. We say you are our Messiah. We want to walk in your ways. We want to walk with you. We want to go with you, Lord Jesus. We honor you. We give you glory. We want you to be honored. We want you to be glorified. We ask your kingdom come. Your will be done. We love you, God. 
In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray.